I bought Atomic Fireballs for our team the other day, and I also felt like Oprah. They were pretty excited about it. Um, next time, I'll buy everybody computers, I guess. Um, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Modify Watches. We uh, create dope, interchangeable watches. Um, so it's kind of like Second Life, but a little bit different. And what I mean by <laughs> interchangeable is, sorry, you can do this with one hand. You can pop the faces and straps out, right? So as a customer, you can mix and match and kind of create your own collection. We've got some licensed properties with uh, Major League Baseball and Live Nation, uh, Tetris, Cal, a bunch of others. Um, and for companies, we've actually done a lot of custom work. Uh, we customize for Google. Does anybody here work at Google? Oh, it's their loss. Yeah? No. You will one day, Calvin. Uh, we've, we've done about eight different watches for Google, um, HP, Deloitte, a couple big companies. So that's kind of uh, funded our business for us. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the background of the company and try and keep it pretty short. I'm definitely uh, a less seasoned entrepreneur uh, than the, the previous guy. So I'll try and also focus much more on the things I know. So a little bit about manufacturing, uh, a lot about customer service, which we still think is the only thing we do right. Um, and then I'll talk a bit about competitors and uh, knockoffs and how we kind of approach that. Um, so I started Modify in 2010 with a classmate. I did business school at Berkeley. Um, and before that, I was a consultant for four years at Deloitte. And before that, I was a history and Hispanic studies major. So a completely useless background, uh, <laughs> which I'm okay with, right? Like, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, but, you know, I knew I wanted to do a startup. I'm the kid who... Uh, I <laughs> had a bank account with my friend when we were 12 to start saving money for a baseball card store at some point. Um, and I always thought that I was going to do a startup. I didn't know what it meant. So I went to business school basically because I liked school and I wanted a couple years um, just to kind of experiment. And so during, during school, started a sustainability company with a couple classmates. It was an awesome idea and we had a lot of passion, but we were a terrible team. Um, four MBAs does not make a good startup team. Um, that I'm, I'm well, well aware of. Um, and so uh, in April of 2010, right before graduating, bless you, right before graduating business school, um, my buddy Gary uh, came to me and was like, dude, I think we should sell watches. And I said, sure, that sounds great, let's do it. And the idea was we were going to do it for three months. Um, I, I, this isn't our PR story, um, but it's, I'm being videotaped in retrospect. So I love watches. Um, uh, but but I, you know, I'd, I'd spent two years focusing on, on startups and like I was excited about it and I had just taken this class with Steve Blank and Eric Reese and it was called uh, Customer Development in High Tech Businesses and it seemed super relevant to starting an analog watch company and I said, sure, let's do it, right? And so the big idea from those guys who I'm sure most of you know is well, one is minimum viable product, right? Get a product out that's good enough and start to test and the second is customer discovery. Go and talk to your customers. Uh, so I insisted that we do an MVP and so we went on eBay and we bought five different watches, like a blue, a black, um, uh, where's the clicker? Oh, you're right in front of me, thanks. Um, so a blue, a black, a green, uh, a white, and I think a pink. And then we put all the different permutations together and we gave them all names. So uh, the blue and black was a bar fight, the white and green I think was Wimbledon, the white and blue was maybe Papa Smurf. I think we had some racier ones. I'm not really sure. It's, it was, this was fun. I actually went on the Wayback Machine and found a picture of our old site. Um, we used to be called the Swap Watch, and then there was some trademark infringement, so we changed it to, to Modify Watches. Um, but the, it, it was, this is a Weebly website, so we didn't even build our own website, right? It's drag and drop, and we just put our personality behind it. Um, and so from day one, uh, I think our first sale was on July 15th, and we literally started talking about this in the end of April, and the idea was, let's just see if people like the concept, right? And so these watches are okay. Like, they're, I was joking with Mario, they were right at least twice a day, which was our promise at the time. Um, and we knew that we were probably going to lose or make a thousand bucks from it. Um, and so the first thing we did was customer service. Um, every order that somebody sent, we always added an extra strap, right? Because that was a value proposition of the company. If you just buy a watch, it's a watch. But if you buy multiple pieces, you're getting the interchangeability, right? The modifiability of it. Um, and so we would also write a handwritten note in every, uh, with every order. And we've actually kept doing that to this day. We've written, I, I don't even know, many thousands of, of note cards to people. My, my partner's in the back, and he just joined a couple months ago, and he has no idea how many note cards I wrote before he got here. Um, but so it was customer service, right? And so we knew we had an MVP. It was a B-plus product. And we, we sold it. And we were selling it to family and friends who we guilted into buying it. And we, we talked to them. We got feedback, right? And, um, you know, immediately, if somebody had an issue, we sent them two. If somebody had another issue, we refunded them fully, and we sent them three, right? We didn't really care about the short term. Uh, it wasn't about cash, right? It was about learning. Um, and so in about October, 
I deferred my full-time job. Uh, my partner Gary went to his. He's uh, so he's in Samsung at Samsung in, in Seoul, Korea, and he's still still involved with the company um, as, as a great advisor. Uh, but I, I was supposed to go back to Deloitte, and I loved it. And I was like, listen, I'm, I'm going to defer for six months and just keep building my business. And they were okay with it. Um, and very quickly uh, decided to uh, invest in a new product, right? Like I knew this wasn't good. And it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good. And it wasn't something I want to put my name behind. And I wasn't comfortable with people saying, hey, the watch that you sent uh, doesn't work. Because even though I wear it as a fashion statement, and we have thousands in our office, and I'll pick up a random one and have no idea what time it actually is. Like the amount of times our team asks each other what time is it is actually pretty hilarious. I think we should have, it's like a swear jar or something. I don't know. Um, but so uh, we decided to invest in a new product, right? So we talked to, you know, by this point, probably 100 different customers. Five said they wanted a calendar function. Five said that they wanted, a, you know, a backlight. I think my mom or my dad wanted a triangle watch, and I, I think that this is a terrible idea. Um, and so I ignored it. But, you know, 95% of people said make it water resistant. 95% said stainless steel backing, make it more durable. Everybody, well, enough people said, can you make a second size, right? So they're super lightweight, but they're pretty big. And so now we've got a mini size that's about 20% smaller. Um, so as soon as I knew we were going to do the business, right, we took our learnings from the MVP and we, we invested. Um, so just very quickly, it, it took over a year for us to get this new product. And these are the most basic products in the world. There's no calendar. It's battery driven. Like it's an analog watch. All the components could feasibly be sourced. Uh, we decided to rebuild it from scratch, right, and take what we learned from everybody. And, you know, like the inside is actually orange, and we did that. Nobody notices it, but we did it so that people would know that it was ours, right? And it wasn't just this generic product. Um, and our branding is all over the inside, but it's, it's super small. So our tagline is fashionable, flexible, modifiable, dope. I, anyway, and it's, it's in the watch, right? And so we made it ours. Um, but so two small things that I learned from this process. Number one is, you know, trust in the MVP, like we saved a ton of money and we learned so much by doing a subpar product for all intents and purposes. I mean, we backed up that product, but it was subpar and we knew it for three months. Um, it got us, it's instrumental in where we are today. The second is, once you get all those customer learnings, make sure to manage it like a project, right? So the business was my number one goal, right? It was the only thing I cared about day in and day out. Um, and, you know, I forgot that November was Thanksgiving and December was Christmas and that people weren't going to work for those six weeks. So my initial goal of we'll launch version two in April of last year turned into July just because, you know, I couldn't push everybody else reasonably so to work during the holidays. And then there was a manufacturing mishap and I was a week late in replying to some email that I missed. And, you know, one thing led to another and we didn't launch our new product until December of last year. Um, so great product, really excited about it. Super easy product and it took us a very long time. Um, I'm gonna go through maybe five different lessons, none of which you guys will remember, uh, but then I'll keep reiterating customer service and this will feel like a worthwhile discussion. So I'm pretty excited about that, right? So why, why were we able to talk to people? Um, well, I mentioned the handwritten notes and you know, I mentioned the, um, like, uh, oh, and, and, and I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but we also put our business card in every, in our, did I say this? No, yes. So we put our business card in every package as well. Um, and my business card has my cell phone on it. And so literally thousands of people have my cell phone. And it's my old New York number, and I don't want to give it up, but at some point I might have to. But it was our way of saying, like, or, or kind of showing people, like, listen, we're here and we're going to listen to you, right? Um, like when we built up our Twitter following, we didn't do it as Modify Watches, we did it as our name. And um, when we build our Facebook following, we do it as ourselves, right? And so it's basically saying, like, we're here to listen to you, which gave us a lot of permission to make mistakes, right? Because people are like, I'm incredibly sorry, but you sent me a broken watch. And I'm like, I I don't know why you're sorry, but thank you. We'll, we'll send you two more, right? Um, and so I, um, for me, I think it's, it's not just lip service. Like we live and breathe customer service on a daily basis. I, I'm the guy who walks in and buys a, a pack of gum for $1.50 and I'll say thank you and I expect a smile and a, like a hearty you're welcome or I may not go back to that store because like that's the interaction that I want. And I think our whole team believes that if we're going to ask you to give us money, um, that we better give you incredible value for that money. Um, so why do I think you guys, as entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, whatever, should care about it? We haven't spent, um, well, one of our interns made a mis mistake, we spent $1,000 for one week. But besides that, we haven't spent uh, money on Facebook or Google Ads. It's all, our company's been built purely on word of mouth, right? So people like Mario who have this great experience and like, I don't know, in your package there's a good chance there's an extra piece, 
right? For whatever reason, we threw in an extra strap, right? Like it was a gift from a friend, and so we added that one more piece. Um, and we do it not to generate more business, but we do it to give you that great experience, and that's kind of built our business for us. Um, so I think my, that my lesson from there is basically think of your customers like family, right? And treat them with love. So I talked a little bit about the e-commerce, and now quickly, the second half of our business is this customization side. Um, so we stumbled into this in October of 2010. A buddy worked at the Pac-10, uh, which is now the Pac-12, the Athletic Association. He asked us to customize watches for him. We said, sure. Um, they were awesome watches, and we sold them at an awesome loss. Um, it was, I, I learned a little bit about pricing and quantities and every, everything from that. It was good. Um, but then soon after, we actually, uh, one of our customers who worked at Google, um, who I've struck a very good friendship with, um, he was wearing it at the office one day and somebody decided to buy 2,000 of them. And so we customized watches for Google and this was like the employee gift. And so we did 1,000 of the Android and I think we did 1,000 for Chrome. And now we've done subsequent more and more for all the different teams. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh. I, sh <clears throat> I should have I been doing this the whole time, right? And saved my voice even better. So we customize about uh, 2,000 watches for Google. And at this, this point, for me personally, was when I started to think, okay, maybe I don't need to go get a consulting job. Like, it was a lot of money. Um, all the money went back into the business. But I thought, hey, if we've worked with Google, okay, like, that's a good company. People like it. Um, a couple weeks later, uh, I was on a flight. I think it was December 23rd. And I was on a flight cross-country from here to New York, and it was a red eye. Um, and my ex's mom worked for American Airlines, so I sat in the first class, like, for 60 bucks or whatever it cost. It was pretty cool. The woman sitting next to me previously worked at Google. She's at this big social networking company that everybody has heard of. Um, we talked for a little while. Um, you know, then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. And then she's working. And I decide, all right, well, I'll stay up and start working. And so I'm doing a little work. And then I'm like, well, I'll, I'll let her know what I do without really letting her know what I do. And so I open up, I think, like this picture. And I start rotating it. And I zoom in on my screen. And I'm squinting. <laughs> I, I, she, she doesn't officially know this is how this happened. Um, and then, you know, 20 minutes later, she's like, so what do you do? And I go, oh, I work at a startup. And she goes, why are you sitting in first class? And I was like, very, very smart question. I, I'm, I'm up here for 60 bucks. Um, long story short, the next week, they ordered 2,500 watches. And it was like the company's seventh anniversary gift, right? And so this is when I called my parents. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm not going to go back to my job. In two years, if I fail miserably at this, all friends who will hire me. And it may not be the job I want, but I'll be okay. And, you know, they gave me their blessing on some, on some level. Um, and so we've done this huge, you know, we have a lot of pictures with babies. I, some are really creepy babies, some are great babies. Um, <laughs> so we've customized, like I said, for HP, Deloitte, and a bunch of others. Um, so where are we right now? Well, we look at like we've got this great foundation. We've got a strong team. I think there are about five of us full time. We've got four interns this summer. Um, they're, they're solid, like really, really smart, sharp kids. Um, some of whom are making way more sales than I am, which feels really good because like, I can take some time off as they do their work. Um, we've done work with some A-plus companies. We've got, this is, oh, by the way, sorry, this is my apartment where I worked out of for a year and a half. Um, yeah, that was, that was not good for the home life. Uh, but it was, it was pretty messy, but it was fun. Um, and we've, we've got these licenses, right, with Live Nation and Major League Baseball and a couple others. Um, and so we've got a lot of competitors and when I say, like, a real lot of competitors, and if anybody goes on fab.com or any daily deal site, I bet you've seen, I mean, I can name off the top of my head, like, 10 watches that kind of look like this, and they're all our version one product, and most of them are actually priced higher than us, and so we have better quality, um, but, and we know this, like, we had that product, we broke that product and said we're going to do a better one, um, but it doesn't matter, because it's a $40 watch, right, or on a deal site, even if they price it at 100 it's a $30 watch, and it seems like this incredible offer. And so I think the last thing I just quickly want to talk about was um, kind of this competitor, fast follower, whatever it is. Like, we know that we have better quality, but it does not matter. If you see this watch and you're like, that's a really cool watch, and it's 40 bucks, you're not going to go shop around, right? So our lesson there is, oh, it's about distribution. It's about word of mouth, right? And it's about having this incredible customer experience, right? And so the way we look at it is, like, we know that people like the watch, right? People walk down the street. I, I don't know why everybody likes the watch, but, like, we have sneakerheads who made us a music video, and we've got, we were featured on Good Morning America's site, and all these moms in the Midwest have the watch, and, like, everybody in between. Um, and you walk down the street, and somebody will stop you and say, cool watch. And then you'll go, oh, but check it out. It pops out, right? And so there's this great experience. But we know that people like the product, but our goal is to get them to love the brand, right? So everything that we do is in this long run, like, 
this is not differentiated by itself. It's about this whole experience. It's about making people feel like they're part of the company. So it's about us letting them design our next watch, letting them name, right? So we had the bar fight in Wimbledon. I think somebody named one the hipster ballerina. We've got all these ridiculous names, but it's built by the community and people feel good about it. Um, so I, I think just a couple small takeaways from, uh, from fast followers is, number one is do something defensible if you can. Like, so for us it's licensing and it's building this strong community. Um, I think number two is just be you and do what you do exceptionally well. Like, people will copy you and that's fine, but they're going to be doing, you know, you skate where the puck is going for the 15 of you who've ever watched hockey before. Um, I think the third one, for us especially relevant, is stay positive and know that there's this huge market out there. Um, I couldn't care less if there are 30 more watch companies. Like, there's enough business for us all to do well if we kind of put our best foot forward. Um, obviously, in some businesses, that's not true, but in most, it is. Like, there's a big market. If you focus and you execute on your thing. Um, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, guys. I've got really long arms. And I don't, right. I guess short forearms and long, anyway. Um, all right, so, that, so that's it. Um, uh, well, I guess, just very quickly. So the goal is not to be a watch company. We incorporate as Modify Industries. This is our first product. And we don't really care about our revenue number. We care about two metrics. We care about the number of pieces per order, meaning like if you just buy a watch, again, you're buying a watch. But if you buy three or more pieces, you're buying something to modify it, right? Like you buy into that system. Um, and the second number is repurchase rate, because that means that we're creating good products that you want, right? We have written on our packaging, and we, we, we really mean this. Um, we're not craftsmen, we're just good at listening, right? And so what we're saying is basically like, you tell us what you want us to create and we'll build that watch for you. If you want purple polka dots and enough people say yes, then we'll make that watch. Um, so just really quickly, the five things that I think are important. Um, number one is just start. You don't need somebody to give you permission to do it. Um, number two is minimum viable product. Like it's a buzzword, much like pivoting, much like all this. But if you do it and you do it right, it'll save you a ton of time and a ton of money. Um, number three is manage your company like a project. Uh, it's your baby, it's not anybody else's. Uh, number four, and this should be number one, but just in the flow of my discussion didn't fit there, is customer service is by far and away the most important thing in the world. Um, I, I'll talk for days about customer service and give examples, and, but everybody should follow the Zappos way. Um, and number five, I think, is if you have a strong vision, just build it. Um, and just start, don't worry about your competitors, and, and go from there. Um, all right, so... Thank you, and yeah.